Hey folks, I'm Demotro, and welcome back to Combo Class, where we have learned many things in the past about numbers, and some things about letters, and today we're going to sort of mix those two concepts to learn some things about how numbers are spelled, and the possibilities and limits we might hit when spelling numbers in a language. Now, since I mostly just know English, that's the language we'll be analyzing numbers in today. But to be more specific, we'll be analyzing it in modern American English, because English isn't one steady, fixed thing. It's changed a lot over time and is different in different regions. For example, the number that we know as 120 used to be called a hundred in many places, and then became more known as the long hundred, a term I think we should bring back. And as another example of how numbers can be different in different places, here we write the numbers million, billion, and trillion like this. But some places and times use a system called the long scale where one billion would refer to this number. And a lot of the others would have different names as well. Although since the short scale is the one I'm more familiar with and probably most of you too, that is what we'll be sticking with today. But what about bigger numbers? Well, certain ones like Google and Googleplex get nicknames, but how could a language prepare a system to have a word ready for any of the infinite amount of numbers? And let's say just whole numbers for today and non-negative ones, like if a language wanted to have a word for zero, one, two, three, and etc., all the way onward to any number that might be encountered there. Well, it is possible if you use your prefixes and or suffixes right, you can come up with a system where prefixes mean certain things related to your base and string them all together to create larger and larger numbers. One system like that was invented by John Conway and Richard Guy and written about in this amazing book that I recommend. And that system is semi-standardized in the mathematical community Community, but as usual, everyone uses language differently, but that is the system we'll be using today. The details of how it puts together large numbers aren't as important. What we need to know is just that the typical types of prefixes combined with some other ways of adding letters so that you know what's going on in a large word can construct a whole number of any size. Now using that system, each number can have exactly one name if we clarify a few things, such as we're not gonna call a number like that one trillion and one, we're just gonna call it one trillion one. There are places and times, usually in a more casual context, where this is called one trillion and one, but we're not gonna be putting any ands in today. This is just one trillion one, which is more official, at least in the region I'm from. We're also not gonna be allowing any nicknames for numbers, like calling 1000 1K, and no jillions and kazillions and joke names of numbers. We're gonna assume that those are non-fixed variable quantities and that a kajillion can mean different things in different contexts unlike these numbers, which are standard and fixed. So every number will have exactly one name if we play by all those rules. And what patterns will emerge if we start writing down all of these non-negative whole numbers and keep going? 
Now I'm mostly just going to be talking about the spelling of numbers, but since that's linked to their pronunciation, I do need to note that seven should not have two syllables. All of the rest of the whole numbers from one through ten, as well as twelve, have one syllable, but seven has two syllables. Similarly, eleven has more syllables than any number in its range. And so, if you listed a chart of how many syllables different numbers have, as I've done, you notice that sevens and elevens showing up in numbers pollute those numbers and infect them with extra syllables for no reason. And in fact, not only is there no reason for it to have all of this extra stuff at the end of these words, instead of calling them something like sev and elev, but the extra stuff is inaccurate. It says even. The two numbers here that have even in them are not even. They're odd. Speaking of which, funny enough, every odd number has an E in it. Let's check it out. Whoop. One, three, it's allowed to have more than one E. E, E, E. And when you construct larger numbers, regardless of the size, the last digit of an odd number is going to end up with an E in it. And that's not true for even numbers. Here's an even number that doesn't have an E. Man, our language did the spelling of numbers thing so weird for some reason. Now, before we look at which other letters are or aren't included in numbers, let's take a peek at what we can learn from the size of the number words. Well, one has three letters bigger than the size it's trying to describe. Two, similarly, is describing two of a thing, but has three letters. And to describe three of a thing, we use five letters, but four has four letters. And after four, all of the future words for numbers in English will take up less letters than the size of the quantity they're describing. Like five only takes four letters, six takes three letters, seven takes five letters, one billion takes ten letters, and since these ones smaller than four have more letters than their size, and these ones larger than four have less letters than their size, and four is the only fixed point with the same amount of letters as size, well, we can play an interesting game where if you pick any number of any size, and then you count how many letters are in the English spelling of that, like if I started with 11 here, we would then go to six because that's how many letters are in that. And then you write down the next number that you got to, six in that case. And then you continue the process, counting the amount of letters and going to that number. Like six has three, three has five, five has four. And since four has itself, we get stuck there. And it turns out no matter what number you start with, no matter how big, you will always end up at four. Now back to which letters appear in these. We noted that all odd numbers have an E in them. And in fact, E would show up very early on any list we'd make of these, whether we started at zero or one. But let's say we were making a list starting from zero and writing down all of the whole numbers. When would we encounter an A? Well, the letter A isn't in any of these. In fact, it's not in any of the first hundred numbers. And people who try and sneak in an and into the numbers would say it shows up at 101, 
but no ands today without the ands. It turns out there are no A's in the spelling of the first 999 numbers. 1,000 if you count zero at the start. You wouldn't write down a letter A until you wrote down the number 1,000. And B would come way later. B you wouldn't write down until you get to one billion. Not to mention C, which the letter C wouldn't show up until you wrote down one octillion. And what about the other letters? Well, here is a list I made of the first number word that would contain each letter if you started from zero and went upward. A in 1,000, B in 1 billion, C in octillion, D showed up at 100, and then some more examples of the first time certain letters would hit. Like M at 1 million, N and O much sooner, P and Q relatively late, and the rest of them pretty early. Now this is assuming that our list started at zero. If our list had started at one, E would have shown up in one instead, and the other ones that say zero would have shown up at a different number, except for Z, which would never show up. Z is in none of the spellings of numbers except zero. So if we started from one on a list of writing down all these whole numbers, we would never meet a Z. There are also some other letters we would never meet. You might notice I didn't put anything for J or K because sorry to the fans of the jillions and kajillions, like I said, those aren't counting as standardized numbers. On this list that we've set up where each number has one name. None of those names have a J or a K in them. Another fun fact about this hypothetical infinite list of numbers in numerical order spelled out is that there's only one number out of all of them that has its letters in what we call alphabetical order going in order of this A to Z spectrum that the alphabet is currently ordered in. The only one that goes in alphabetical order is the number 40, which, warning, warning, it does not have a U in there like the word four. This is how you spell 40. Similarly, there's exactly one number that has its letters in reverse alphabetical order. And the only one with that property is the number one. So these happen to have a fun little trait to themselves. But what if we looked further into alphabetizing these number words, and instead of a hypothetical list where these were all in numerical order, going zero, one, two, three, etc. We imagined a hypothetical list that somehow put this infinite amount of number words into alphabetical order based on how each of them landed compared to each other alphabetically. Now trying to turn this list of things that we think of as in numerical order into something that's alphabetically ordered might seem like an impossible task to even get started on. Like, where do I put one on my alphabetical list? With all the possible prefixes and suffixes that I could combine with whatever system we set as our standard, there's gonna be an infinite amount of numbers earlier and an infinite amount of numbers later than one on this list. And so it's gonna be hard to describe where in the middle of that infinity one is. But we might be able to get more clues about some other numbers. Like if zero is one of the numbers we include to alphabetize, that starts in a Z, the last letter of the English alphabet. 
So for another one to fall after that, it would need to also start in a Z and then have the rest of that further alphabetically. But none of these even start in a Z. And none of the prefixes that we are going to combine to make the larger numbers are going to, are going to contain a Z either. So zero will be the last number on our infinite alphabetical list. All of the other infinite numbers fall alphabetically earlier than zero. So we're not gonna be able to know much about the middle of this list where numbers like one land, but we do know about the end of the list. So what about the beginning? We actually can figure out what the first number alphabetically on the list will be. If we alphabetize this small chunk, we'll notice that the ones that come earliest are eight and 11, because those start with an E and nothing started with an A, B, C, or D here. And in fact, no whole number we encounter will start with one of those first four letters. Like one billion does have a B starting part of it, but one billion starts in an O. And no number has right at the beginning an A, B, C, or D. So then we might wonder, are there gonna be any numbers that start in an E that will sneak earlier? Well, eight with that E-I-G-H-T turns out to be the earliest. Eight will be the first item on the list alphabetically. And 11, which looks like it falls not far from that alphabetically, will be an infinite amount of items later because we can make any combo of 88, 808, 806, anything starting with the eight that would be after eight alphabetically, but before 11. And if we did think of that giant family of numbers that could start in eight, we could investigate that to find the second number alphabetically too, which is eight billion. There's gonna be no prefix we can attach to a number that's going to make this eight at the start come earlier than eight billion if we didn't have the eight on its own. Now, that's the first on the list, that's the second, and that's the last. Leave a comment if you can figure out any other items on this list. And also let me know in a comment if you speak any other languages apart from English and you notice if any of these patterns we've covered do or don't also hold true in that language. All right. Our number investigations for now. Uh, our viewers wanted to see my cats in this episode, so let's put them over the credits today. I'll catch you next time.